In the era of COVID-19, temperature checks are being used at places like gyms, courthouses, airports, and presidential debates. But there's a question of whether this is an effective screening measure or just medical theater. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Many places are using infrared temperature guns, which tend to work fairly well under the right conditions, but problems can arise if they aren't appropriately calibrated or used in a consistent manner, and results can change based on things like humidity or rainy weather or something else that changes a person's skin, like sweat. They are also less effective when used to scan crowds, which is being done in some cases. So many other issues with this screening method, too. One is that commonly used fever reduction medications, like Tylenol, can mask a fever without being disclosed. Another is that lots of people infected with COVID, even if they exhibit symptoms, never have a fever. This is true even in some who get very sick. And the biggest consideration is that a number of people infected with COVID-19 are totally asymptomatic. That means they don't show symptoms, including fever, so temperature checks aren't going to stop them. This is also true, of course, for pre-symptomatic people people who are infected, but whose symptoms haven't yet begun. This is a big deal because it's been estimated that these groups account for more than half of COVID-19 transmissions. Also, look, when you have a fever, you usually feel pretty crappy. It's likely that many people who have a fever already know they have a fever and hopefully have correctly decided to stay home when they are sick. So this screening really only applies to the small number of people who, one, have a fever because of COVID, and two, have no idea. For all these reasons, the CDC is no longer recommending health screenings at airports for passengers arriving from certain countries, directing resources instead to more effective mitigation efforts like education and illness response. They do still list temperature checks as an optional screening strategy for employers, but they make note of the issues and state that it is not a replacement for other mitigation measures. And speaking of airport screenings, based on factors such as screening sensitivity, duration of travel, asymptomatic infections, and incubation period, one study estimated that 46% of travelers with COVID-19 would not be detected by thermal image scanners at airports. Remember, Effective tests should be decently sensitive and specific. Temperature checking doesn't check either of those boxes. And beyond all that, a major concern is that checking for fevers makes people relax. Taking reassurance from a normal temperature read or from knowing that temperature checks were in place at the event or establishment one might be attending means one might compromise a little on other measures. Hand washing, mask wearing, and social distancing might be practiced less strictly if people feel the temperature checks are keeping them relatively safe. And for the reasons previously mentioned, this safety reassurance isn't necessarily warranted. So we will still need to practice all of those other behaviors to remain strong. None of this is to say that checking temperatures is useless. Sure, temperature screenings on their own are not an adequate COVID-19 mitigation measures. They are, however, an additional layer of protection that, when combined with other layers, contributes to our mitigation efforts. They may also serve as a reminder to people of the situation we're in and that we're all undertaking efforts together, which is a useful public health measure. If we rely on temperature checks alone, we're in trouble. But if we use them in conjunction with other measures and understand the context and limitations of each measure, they all contribute to the overall effort. More remains better than perfect. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this other episode on FDA approval of the first at-home COVID test. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the video and perhaps subscribe to the show down below and think about going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show even during a global pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.